What's up guys, Lucky Locks here. Welcome back to another prediction video. This is going to be for LFA 130. We have Marius Kiskevich coming up against Gambolino in this one. This should be a good card. Six fights on the main card of this one. So uh, without any further ado, let's get right into the first fight on the main card. All right, first up we have a middleweight matchup and it's going to be between Manatua Lemaire and Daniel Gadley. And Lemaire is a 3-0 prospect from North Dakota, so he is a home game here at the Four Bears Casino in his home state. He was 6-3 as an amateur and got some really good experience down there, actually fought on LFA twice as an amateur, fought Joel Bauman as an amateur. He was defeated there, but obviously a tough matchup, good name to have on the resume. He's now racked up three wins all by knockout as a pro. Not over the best competition, but he has looked very impressive and has basically done what, what you would want him to do uh, at the level that he's fighting currently. So basically all his fights have just been him coming forward, ruthless aggression, and finishing the fight in the first round. He's got power in his hands, seen good wrestling offense as well. Haven't seen him tested much as a pro, but he had a pretty rigorous strength of schedule as an amateur. He never fought anyone as a loss while he was down there. His combined opponent record uh, as an amateur fighter was 19-0, and so he was challenging himself regularly at that level, uh, even though he hasn't really fought the, the toughest guys so far yet as a pro. Uh, standing across the cage from him is going to be Daniel Gadley, who was 3-0 and as an amateur and is now 4-1 and as a pro. Also, definitely has not been fighting a high level of competition so far. Has only fought one guy with a winning record, and it was 1-0, and and that was his one loss. So, his combined opponent record is 25-63, and so not super great there, but he does have a good record so far, 4-1. and He is finishing, guys. He's a good grappler. We've seen him compete on Submission Underground before, and all of his wins in MMA have come via Submission, 100% finish rate. Uh, but I think Lemaire wins this one on his home turf. I think he overpowers Gadley, and I think he probably finds a KO in this spot. So that's the way I'm leaning on this first fight. Next up, we're going to stay in the middleweight division for a fight between Billy Elikana and Coleman Scribner. Elikana is a 3-0 prospect. He's 26 years old. He's also a pretty big guy at middleweight. He's 6'3", 76.5 inch reach. We saw him on LFA 120 where he won a decision there in his LFA debut. And this guy seems like a solid prospect. 6-1-1 as an amateur. Wins over Brian Battle and Sullivan Cauley on the amateur circuit. Had a majority draw with Ty Guerter down there as well. So has really good experience for a 3-0 fighter. I mean, those amateur fights are... Uh, are no joke for sure, man. I mean, beating Brian Battle and Sullivan Cauley, uh, UFC and Bellator fighter respectively, I mean, that's definitely impressive. Uh, and, and obviously going in there with Ty Guerter as an amateur as well, uh, very impressive names that you really like to see on the resume. And Elikon is a good striker. He is good pressure. This is a guy that likes to be on the front foot, likes to put you, put you into the fire, likes to come forward. Uh, Scribner is also 26 years old. He is 3-1 and as a pro, had a 4-2 and amateur career. As a pro now, he has a 100% finish rate, has faced a lower level of competition though thus far in my opinion, has not won a fight outside of the first round as a pro either. Um, and yeah, man, hasn't fought anyone with a winning record in his four pro appearances so far, but he is powerful, he is explosive, you know, he really is dangerous earlier in fights, but he can be a little bit reckless, and I think Elikana is a little more polished, has the technique advantage, I also think he's going to be the bigger man here, uh, Scribner, definitely going to be dangerous early, but I think Elikana is going to have the upper hand in this matchup, I like Elikana to get the win here. Next up, we're going to be moving down 15 pounds to 170 for this bout between Gage Saunders and Jalen Fuller. So Saunders is an 8-4 and four pro prospect from Montana. He is 28 years old, had an 8-3 and three amateur career, and started off his pro career well, 5-1. and one. He then lost three straight, but now has won three straight coming into this fight. Hasn't faced the highest level of competition, but he does have a 75% finish rate, has four submissions, has been really dangerous on the mat in previous fights, but the thing is, I just don't really think his grappling is at the level where it's a huge threat to Jalen Fuller in this matchup. Fuller is a regular on LFA. He was undefeated up until his last fight, which he lost to Bruno Assis last time out, uh, who just fought for the title, actually. So Fuller's now 5-1. and one. He has an 80% finish rate with three knockouts, one submission, back at 170 pounds here. Has had trouble on the scales in the past with his weight class, but he's a great striker. He's a knockout artist, lands on guys early and puts their lights out very long and rangy. He can snipe you. Not the best grappler, but he's still okay there. Does have a submission win on his resume. I think Jalen Fuller should be able to get this one done so long as he makes weight and is feeling good. I think he is the all-around better fighter here. I think he can get 
his way on the feet and also be able to defend any grappling threats. So I'm going with Jalen Fuller to get the win here. Now we have the first of two strawweight matchups on this card, and this first one is between Hillary Rose and Tiani Valle. Uh, Rose is 5-4. and four. She has an 80% finish rate, started her career 4-1, and one, and then she loses to Cheyenne Blismas on Contender Series, then finishes a debuting opponent with leg kicks on CFFC, was supposed to fight Catherine Paprocki in LFA, uh, Miss Wade, and that fight fell out. Also had a canceled bout against Emily Whitmire on Invicta, uh, but ends up fighting Ashley Nichols on LFA and loses a decision there. Gotta give her credit though, she's fighting pretty much the toughest fight she can get every time. Uh, you know, these are, are some of the best straw weights that we have in the regional scene at the moment. Striking wise for Rose, she is really quick on the feet. She gets in and out. Uh, stand up has definitely improved over time. Good footwork. Uh, but Definitely, I would say, a better grappler than a striker. Good jiu-jitsu game. Uh, a submission threat on the mat. Coming up against Tiani Valley here, who's 3-3, three and three, was an 8-2 and two amateur. Beat Sam Hughes as an amateur. That's a nice win. She has a 100% finish rate as a pro. Three wins, all knockouts. Hasn't really, you know, had wins over the greatest competition, but fought Catherine Paprocki. She's good. Got finished in round three. Carrie Melendez is, is decent as well. Uh, she was finished in the first round of that one. And Brittany Cloudy was 0-1 at the time when they fought, but she's not bad either. But... You know, Valley was finished in that fight too. She has been Rinica choked in all of her losses. The fights that she's won as a professional so far, not over a really high level of opponent. Uh, she does bring a lot of power though at 115, and she has really crisp combinations. I actually really like what I see from her on the feet. Uh, just has been a liability on the mat in the past. The thing is though, I think she'll have some size in this matchup that could help her keep this one standing. Rose has shown good footwork, good volume, but. I think that the power of Valley is actually going to be an X factor in this fight on the feet. I think if she can keep this standing for the majority of the time, she can win a striking battle here. Uh, I guess I'll lean towards a dog in a close fight. Don't feel super great about this one. Next up is our second strawweight matchup, and this is between Marnik Mann and Kelsey Arneson. Mann is... You know, 4-0 as a pro now with a 100% finish rate. She had an amateur career as well where she was also 4-0. Uh, she was the Fusion Fight League strawweight champ and made her LFA debut last fight and finished Pauline Macias. Triangle in the third, that's a great win for her. Uh, really impressive. Struggled a little bit earlier in that fight, but she did find her stride in the second round and then found the finish in the third. So she's going to be the younger fighter in this one by about five or six years. She is pretty small even for straw weight at five foot with a 63 and a half inch reach, but she's a very good athlete. Her opponent, Kelly Arneson, is training at Trials MMA and Fitness in Colorado. Fought her two pro fights on LFA, debuted against Tabitha Ricci, so obviously a really tough one there to draw in your first pro fight. But she went the distance with, with her there, and that has actually aged really well because, uh, you know, most of the, the fighters that Tabitha Ricci was coming up against on the regional, she was finishing them pretty early and making it look pretty easy. But Arneson was able to go the distance with her. Uh, she's a one and one record and had a good win last time out on LFA. But I think Marnik Mann is a really big step up in competition for Arneson. I think Mann could potentially be in the conversation to challenge for the strawweight title with another one or two good wins. Uh, I feel like if you can beat Pauline Macias, then you are going to be able to beat Kelly Arneson in this spot. Man is a pretty big favorite, but uh, yeah, I feel like she gets the win in this one. The main event of the night is going to be in the middleweight division. We have a match between Marius Kiskevich and Alessandro Gambolino. Kiskevich has been on the Canadian regionals for a long time, worked his way up to 8-0 and by the end of 2019, and then gets his chance at the UFC, gets a shot on the Contender Series at the end of 2020. He lost a decision there to Mario Souza, pretty close fight. He then had a fight scheduled about eight months later against Joel Bauman, uh, who's a good name on the regional scene. Bauman had to pull out, and uh, Marius ended up fighting for the 195-pound belt in Unified MMA, a promotion based in Alberta, four months later. Uh, he won the fight via knockout in the first round. He's an 89% finish rate. He gets guys out of there and has never been finished himself. Uh, got power on the feet, really durable. We've seen him take some punishment, particularly in the early part of round two against Souza. Then was able to get him in the clinch and eventually get a takedown. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt, has five submissions. Pretty good top game, and he's got a good guard as well. He can be dangerous from bottom. Gambolino also has been fighting for around 10 years now. Uh, got a record of 8-1 and one earlier in his career, and then took a pretty big step up in competition in his Brave CF debut and was finished in the first round. 
His next fight on Brave ended in a no contest, and now he's gone three and one over his last four fights back in Brazil. The loss was to the Jungle Fight champion Wilker Lemos, who is a good fighter. But he's fought a lot at, at welterweight, and he's taking this fight at 185. Marius is a pretty big middleweight, 6'3", 75 inch reach. Uh, Gambolino doesn't really have the best striking. He'd much prefer to be on the mat. He has seven submissions. He's very dangerous there. Uh, he can end up being a little bit too comfortable on his back for my liking as a result. Definitely is dangerous off the bottom, but I think Marius being a black belt and having a good top game can keep him safe there in top position. Probably uh, Marius is going to be a bit bigger here as well, I would guess. I think that Marius is a little bit better on the feet, has decent power, and is really durable on the ground. I think he can stay safe with the jiu-jitsu game, so I'm going to go with Marius Kuskevich to win this one, guys. But uh, definitely a good fight in the main event here. That's going to do it for my LFA 130 predictions. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. As always, I really appreciate it. Best of luck with any bets you choose to make this weekend. And as always, I will catch you on the next video. Take care.